Okay, so this is a reprisal of my um, <laughs> my easy slackline setup videos. So uh, you've got you've got three pieces of webbing for anchors, and you got your slackline, which is 50 feet. Is that right? Yeah. And then uh, two seven-foot anchors and a 15-footer. And the 15-footer is good if you have like a super large tree or just uh, something that's a little bit too big. We'll just leave that low for now. So for your anchors, first thing you want to do is uh, just make loops at the end. And this can be just a simple overhand knot. And you want a relatively large loop just to make it easy to get the just to get the carabiner in there easily. Hydrate it in front of me. So I got a loop about maybe that big, and then I just. Fold it over, and then pull it three through. And then th these are just going to be. That's definitely better. Yeah. So these are going to be permanent, permanent uh, knots. You, you never have to undo these. Let's give it a little bit more. And these knots will. Uh, uh, they'll come a little bit loose over time. Like eventually it'll, it might pull that tail through. So you want to have a, just a good little tail on it, just in case. <clears throat> okay? And then you got you got to do that to one end of the slack line. So this is just a daisy change right now. So I'm just going to pull that free. And then take one end of the line. Safety's sake, make it a pretty big. Cut. That's good right there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So pretty much your slack line is assembled. All we need to do now is set it up. Set anchors. And so, like, if the tree is not so big, smaller than this, you'd be able to double wrap it, mm -hmm. but uh, for this size, it's not enough. So you just put one anchor carabiner from here. And of course, if you can, you want to protect your tree. Uh, Gibbon sells some tree wear stuff. To, uh, it's, like a, it's like a soft, kind of foamy astroturf or roll that you can put on the tree and protect it. Um, or you can just use like cardboard or little bits of rubber or something. Pretty much anything to protect the tree. You just don't want to damage the bark. Hey, so uh, can you just reattach that? Just we'll do a close up of it. Oh yeah, sure. So, I mean, I just wrap it once, or you can wrap it twice, and you'd have to turn it around, and then you just put the carabiner through. These and I turn it around. I usually like the, the gate to be facing into the line. And then you just uh, attach, so you're going to attach your line to that carrier. Right? Just like that. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be one end. <coughs> Take our line, come out over this way. So we're going to do the same thing. Turn it so it's facing, and it's more important on this side. And since you have five, um, what do you what do you mean facing the line? Uh, the lock of the the gate. Okay. So instead of facing into the tree facing into the line. Got it. It'll make it easier to feed the line in, into it later on. And since you have two, you don't need to do this. But I'm just going to put two on here. Okay, now you have your anchor set. And the two, can you just show the two? So, and just make sure that the... You can oh, so make, they're, they're identical. Yeah, they're facing the same way. It doesn't really matter, it just, it's just for easier. Mm -hmm. 
you know, this isn't a life or death situation. <laughs> you don't have to worry about making your carabiners opposing. Okay, so, take the line. And this takes just a little bit of practice, but what you got to do is kind of learn about how much tension you want on the line and the distance between the anchors. And then you have to decide, because if you make it really close, you're only going to be able to tighten it this much. And if you can, and that's not going to make the line very tight. If you start way out here, then you're going to be able to tighten it a lot more. But you might end up tightening it to as much as you want. You'll still have a pretty large space here. So it just depends. You, you get used to it. But I, I would okay. start about for this distance, maybe about yeah five to seven feet away, and then come in here. This is the important part. So you need to make a clove hitch, and there's a really easy way to do that. To make the clove hitch, you lay the line over your hand, and then you wrap it once over your hand again, and then you pinch this loop that you've created, and you keep it all facing the same way. So you have two loops like this, and you want to just place this loop on the other side, like that. So these two, these two loops are now side by side, but they're crossing. And then you take your carabiner, and what I do is I take the screw gate facing this way, and then I put it through here, and then turn it. So now the locking gate is facing the anchor, and you want to do this with both carabiners through the same loop, one on top of the other, and then you pull this side out. And that creates a really nicely dressed clove hitch. So, with the line now coming over the top of the carabiners, the reason that you want to use two here is because the clove hitch is really hard to undo. It's going to tighten as you get the line tighter. So, when you, uh, when you take, go to take it down, it'll be easier to take the carabiners like this and then butterfly them apart, and it loosens it loosens the clove hitch, so it makes it easier to take so, down. Now that we've got the clove hitch on our carabiners, we're ready to make the friction knot. So you just pull the line over to the anchor, and then you just so bring the camera in. So you just want to pull it through like that. So the so the line you always want it lined straight. You don't want it twisted. Pull it back to this one. Now it's coming over and under, and so now this is this line is inside the first one that we made. And then you're going back, and doing that again. And this time, this is why you don't tighten it. You pull this loop a little bit open, and then when you tighten this, it comes in the inside. So it's it's recursive. It's coming mm -hmm. inside more and more. So now the line is just kind of set up a little bit, and then you can set your anchors a little bit higher if they've slipped down. Yeah, whatever, that's fine. We're not really going to jump on this too much. Pull it back one more time. And same thing. Pull those loops in and then tighten. And right now, it's a friction line. The friction of the line on itself is going to hold it in place. But you have to tighten it. So, you can just pull on it. And if you, if you have someone helping you and they're behind you, don't wrap it <laughs> around your hand, or it's gonna really mess it up. But you can like, you know, just tree or whatever. So that's fine. And then you like jump on it just a little bit, and that's gonna loosen this a little more. So you have to jump a bit, and it loosens, and then you tighten it some more. The more that you play with it, it'll loosen more and more. You don't have to keep tightening it if, if that's what you're going for. <laughs> Sometimes you're alone and you don't have uh, you don't have anyone to tighten it with. So if it's too hard to tighten it this way, then sometimes I'll loop it around my like my belt area and then create a loop here, over and through like that. So it's just really simple knot. And I have my hand in here and that just kind of holds it in place and I can use my hips to pull back on the line and that makes it that'll make it a lot tighter. Foot against the tree and all that. So now we're going to take down the line. I'm in here. So the 
because it's a friction knot, it's really simple. All you do is you take the line that you've tightened and you just pull it this way, and that already starts to pull it out of the loop that you've created. And you just have to kind of sometimes the gates will open a little bit, but sometimes you just gotta kind of make a little a little bit. It'll be harder if you make it really tight though. And then uh, once once the clove hitch is loose enough, just turn your beaners around. Just like that. And so the clove hitch will come right out of the line. <laughs> 